So you click on this video because you're curious. Can you duplicate a Posca pen for only 100 yen? Yeah, I guess that rhymed. So as you guys know, I love Posca pens, but when I saw these, 100 yen or basically one dollar paint markers i was curious how they stacked up to a posca pen is it worth going cheaper let's find out let's take our red paint pen here and compare it to an actual posca pen so i'll go ahead well hold up hold up you guys look notice do not use the writing instrument for the purpose other than writing now you guys, I know I'm going to be doing art in this video, so please do not report me to the Japanese police. So here we have the two markers side by side, pretty similar in size. And it looks like this one has instructions on how to activate it, but our Posca pens don't. So here is our piece of paper for activating. We'll go ahead and give it the old shake. Wow, I opened the cap and this smells like, like spray paint, like a spray paint can. Ooh, and it activated way faster than Posca pens. Whoa, okay. I don't know if it's a good or bad thing, but the $1 marker was definitely a lot juicier. And honestly, it seems to not have torn up the paper. That said, I do notice that these say ink on the package, even though they're called paint markers. So I'm a little skeptical if this is even an actual paint pen or if this is an ink pen, but I guess we're going to find out. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like these are water-soluble acrylic paint like a normal Posca pen is. As you can see, the water did not activate it at all. In fact, there is some weird residue on my brush that we have to try to get off with some sort of substance. Whoops! They do seem to be very opaque, which is good, but they do seem to reactivate with each other very easily. So that being said, I have no idea what these are made out of. They smell like spray paint, but I, I also don't know anything about spray paint. So there we go. Um, a little terrified, but um, here we go. You can just hear the terror in my voice. I am just so scared to work with these markers but the show must go on. So for the art in today's video, I took inspiration from a recent holiday here in Japan. We have White Day on March 14th. It's basically a follow-up holiday a month later from Valentine's Day, where those who receive chocolate on Valentine's Day then get to return the favor to those and give chocolate back. It originated, I believe, with marshmallows, then it moved on to white chocolate. But I think over the years, it's sort of lost that white theme but I wanted to take some inspiration from this holiday no we're not going to be painting with chocolate again I did however want to play around with negative space aka white space hence our white day inspiration I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to draw. I just knew I wanted to play around with the negative space in art. I started to doodle different shapes. I started off with a circular theme, moved on to a triangle and then a square. And then I found myself doodling dinosaurs within each of these shapes and just really experimenting with white space and color. Well, maybe the sketch is in black and white, but I'm thinking in the future I'll play with color. So after some messing around with our shapes and ideas and having quite the struggle with our circle, I came up with this really cute series of illustrations themed around dinosaurs and shapes, and I will talk more about these ideas when I work on them. For now, aside from White Day, let's talk about my main source of inspiration for the art in this video, which came from the sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is of course a great community for learning any new skill you can think of from traditional painting to digital art. Not feeling creative? Learn to bake or manage your time. There are thousands of classes to choose from. When I found Olympia's class on using bold colors and shape and illustration, I knew it would be perfect inspiration for these markers and also using negative space. After I finished her classes, I felt so inspired to push the shapes and colors in my art even further. I was so inspired I was 
was doodling these while I watched her classes. I couldn't wait until I was done. A premium membership for Skillshare is super affordable. At less than $10 a month, you can get unlimited access to thousands of high quality classes. And the first 500 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a two month free trial. Thank you again to Skillshare, but let's get to painting. Something Olympia talked a lot about in her Skillshare class was taking inspiration from your location, your surroundings, the people, the places, the things that maybe you don't pay so much attention to that you could actually take quite a bit of inspiration from. So as you may or may not know, depending on how many videos of mine you've watched lately, I have temporarily moved to Japan for a few months just for a change of pace, a change of scenery, just to get out of the house and across the world. There is so much inspiration to take from here, but our first inspiration is going to be my umbrella. The last time I came to Japan a couple of years ago, I bought an umbrella and I meant to bring it with me because it's a very light umbrella, good for travel. You can put it in your backpack, but I forgot it. Classic. So the first thing I did while I was here was buy an umbrella because it is spring, it's rainy, and there were a lot of really cute patterns to choose from, but what I settled for was a black umbrella that had some lovely little speckles on it to represent stars. And then there are also spacemen scattered throughout the pattern. So it looks like a very subtle black umbrella with some cute pattern on it. Umbrellas are round, space is fun, so let's throw a dinosaur in space, get a circular inspiration from that umbrella, and that's what I ran with. As far as including negative space into this illustration, I always think about clouds when I think of negative white space, but space doesn't have clouds necessarily. So instead, I just threw in this weird blobby, swirly white stuff that could be space clouds. <laughs> Look, don't question it. There's also a dinosaur flying through space. So we're, we're just having fun here. I framed everything mostly within this circle frame and then had the weird blobby cloud things break that frame as well as a planet. And overall, I just had a lot of fun creating this negative space. Oh, negative space. Oh my gosh. It's a space illustration. As much as a struggle as these markers were, and I will be talking more about these markers during our next piece, I absolutely love the result of this illustration. I just think it's so much fun. The negative space turned out really nice. The colors are vibrant. And overall, I just... I really like this piece. I think the biggest disappointment with these markers came from the opacity. When I went back and added stars to our space, the white especially didn't really show up as much as I was hoping it would. When I did our swatch test, it looked like they layered really nicely, but turns out you do have to put a few layers on and the white just completely disappeared, which was a little disappointing, but for a dollar, can I really complain? And honestly, I was looking forward to creating the next one. Okay, so just a couple of words about this art and then I will talk about how I feel about these markers. So moving on to our second shape, we do have a triangle and I think the most iconic triangle shaped thing in Japan is Mount Fuji. So for a triangle shape, I just have a long neck dinosaur weaving its neck through the triangular shape. At first I was going to play around with maybe the dinosaur being white in front of the mountain, but then a different color outside of the shape. But then I started to think about how I did want to play around with the negative space. So in the end, I put a red circle behind everything, which does look like the Japanese flag, which turned out really nice and also just made our white 
white dinosaur pop. I added a few shadows into our dinosaur by mixing white and black, which I also did for the clouds and just, it turned out really nice. Love it. And even though this is our most simple illustration of the batch, I, I love it. I love the simple colors, especially the greens, obviously. And overall, I just have a lot of fun when it comes to simple illustrations, especially when it comes to paint markers like these. So really quick, let me just talk about a few things about these markers. Number one, the smell, as I mentioned, they smelled so bad. I'm talking spray paint. I don't know how that happened. I don't know what spray paint is made out of that makes it smell so unique, but I'm very thankful that the spring weather was coming through on the day I recorded this video because I had every window open to make sure I didn't pass out from the smell because it was so bad. That said, these are not acrylic paint. Honestly, I have no idea what they are, but I had to go out and specifically buy nail polish remover to clean my brush which RIP my brush, I'm pretty sure that thing is destroyed after this video. Although these markers are a dollar, it is very nice to have the variety of nib sizes. With Posca pens, you do get what you pay for. Here in Japan, a Posca pen is 220 yen, which is just about $2, which is so much cheaper than you can get Posca pens in Canada. So the nibs on these pens were quite huge, which meant you could not get small details, which I guess is fine because these are meant for writing. But that is the reason why I ended up using my brush probably 75% or 90% of the time. The consistency of the markers after they dried was weirdly sticky. Again, not sure what it's made out of, but that was strange. And... To conclude, these are not meant for art. I, I don't know what these are meant for. Maybe just making little signs on a poster or something. I'll be honest, I can't read much Japanese. So, you know, I, I don't know what I'm doing, but did I have fun with these markers? Oh, heck yes. I love the art I made with these and just overall, it's just really fun to experiment with things, especially if you don't know what you're getting into. For our final shape, we have our square, or I guess in this case, it has turned into a rectangle. Okay, I'll admit, one of my favorite things to draw when working with negative space is birch trees. So honestly, I just, I just did this because I wanted to. But if I had to connect it to something here in Japan, I would say I'm anticipating the release of Animal Crossing, which the Japanese name is Dobutsu no Mori, which is Animal Forest. Hence, our forest illustration. After having already created two illustration using these absolutely horrible paint pens, I was really not looking forward to working on this illustration. On one hand, I was looking forward to working on it because I liked the sketch, I thought it looked like fun, but these paint pens were not a joy to work with. I was using the pens itself to put down the larger chunks of color and then going back with our brush and getting into those tight corners and adding the small details. What you don't see off of camera is I do have a little palette where I was pumping the paint pens just to extract the paint so that I could use them as a paint with the brush. This area became quite a mess. The paint dried really quickly. You couldn't reactivate it like you could somewhat with Posca pens with water. So I was ending up with these globs of paint off of camera. And then I would go through with our pen and try to pump more color into each little section. And then the nib of the marker would get stuck and just come right out of the marker. It was a mess off of camera. Plus with the nail polish remover and cleaning my brush, Th this video was a disaster, but I love the art, so it was worth it. 
So when it came to the art on this piece, I, like I said, I was kind of scared to work on it because these pens were so difficult to work with, but in the end, I absolutely love the result. Layering the colors from darkest to lightest as it got closest to the viewer just really worked for this piece. And something that I played around with was the texture on the birch trees. So normally I go through with my brush, whether it be dry brushing or a fully inked brush and just add a lot of texture, lots of strokes, but usually I just use the color black or whatever a dark color I am using in the illustration. But for this piece, because I was playing around with color so much, I thought it would be interesting to use whatever color was touching the birch tree at the time. So if you notice, I use red where the birch tree is touching the background, orange where the birch tree is touching the trees near the top and the bottom, and then yellow where it's touching the topmost part. So this was really fun to play around with. I think this piece is super successful. I can't decide if I like it more than the space illustration. I did try to use painter's tape to section off the trees because obviously that way it would be a lot easier to paint around. I did do a test off of camera, did not work very well. The paint was seeping under the tape and just overall it, 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 it was a disaster. <laughs> But I did it. I conquered yet another 100 yen art supply or writing supply. Once again, thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and thank you guys so much for watching all the way through. I hope you enjoyed yet another 100 yen art supply tr try. These are really fun and even if they're disasters, I enjoy them. All right, stay golden, bye.